Hey, Tibby! It's like you, Bob. But here we are. It's 8 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. And that means it is oh, the witching hour. Ooh, here we are. We got the whole crew all back together. And we all getting our witch groove on tonight. I'm going to let each of them say hello. We'll go down the line. Let's start with Lady Angela, our high priestess. Hi, everybody. Super excited for tonight's show, and let's see what happens. So glad you're here. Lord Tony, our guardian. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here. Hope you are, too. It's going to be an interesting show tonight. Yay. And then we got Lady Carol, our keeper of the sacred staff. Hi, everybody. Hope you enjoy the show tonight. We're really ramped up for it. That's right. We're all ramped up. I tell you, you know... I don't need to take drugs. I'm a natural spaz. I don't need no upper <laughs> for anyone. I really am. You know. It's true. He is. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not as much of a spaz as some people, because at least I do sleep at night. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here we are. I'm telling you, well, you know. Last week, you know, Lord Tony got me all revved up, and I have not come down since last week because Lord Tony said, oh, look what I found in my garage, Bob, and he walks in with a giant rod of titanium. <laughs> and you all know, that is my new favorite metal, and Tony carrying titanium around, I was like, I would kill to have that much titanium in my house. And tonight, by the way, I'm wearing my titanium rings. I want to show those to you. And I got a new piece of jewelry. And Lord Tony can tell us more about titanium here. But I got a piece of black titanium. Cool. So I got, I got silver titanium and black titanium. So that's my, that's my new thing. I'm into my titanium. But you know, Lord Tony, he is a master at metal work. He is a machinist. And he works with a lot of metals. And Lord Tony, I want you to, you know, maybe show some people, maybe if you have your titanium with you, you can tell us a, bit, a little bit about titanium. Um, well, yeah, I've got the original piece I showed you, and then you know, got the, the longer one. And, and guess what? I actually found a lot more in my garage. <gasps> I'm moving in with Tony so I can have all that titanium. Yeah, I've got... I'm guessing probably another 15 more feet of it in my garage. Oh, oh. You're going to hear some puttering out there and go out to your garage or go find Bob knee deep in all your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, scratching at the garage door. Yeah. <laughs> Run along. Run along. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's, 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 it's one of the main metals that I work with. Tony, uh, I don't know what it is, but I gotta tell you, I have an addiction to the smell. It's like when I hold it, it's like, do you remember the golem guy from uh, Lord of the Rings? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I gotta tell you, I have, oops, we got some feedback here. But I'm telling you, that's how I feel about this metal. It's like obsessive for me. So, My precious. <laughs> what, tell, precious us, you, tell us what you do with titanium. What is some of your, like just your nine to five work, and then we'll get into your spiritual work also. Yeah, mo mostly my nine to five is uh, I'm a machinist and I make me my mostly medical parts that go in the body. Oh. And, uh, some, some military parts for missiles and things like that. I'm not allowed to talk about any more than that on that one. Right. But, uh, cool. That's pretty much it, though. I just make a lot of medical parts. That's nice. So you have a real sense of like, like you, because you work metal, like, do you get a tactile sense? Like you can feel if a metal's going to work or something, or like it's not going to work or it's going to be a challenge. You get that when you touch the metal? Not, not too much. It's, it's more or less, I, I, I can tell if it's going to be a really garbage job <laughs> because some of the metal that we've gotten in the past has been not the quality that we need. And uh, it's, it's wrecked a lot of tools and, cost companies a lot of money. Wow. So like you get a metal, you try to tell your boss, you know, this is going to be a challenge, but they say, go ahead. Yeah, we've had that. And then there's other times we've just pulled the, the metal out and got a different piece and found that one to work out better. How interesting. Wow. 
Well, is it true the rumors about titanium that it's it's pretty strong metal? Because I, I feel my jewelry is pretty strong. Yeah, titanium is extremely strong stuff. It uh, pound per pound, it it more than I want to say doubles the strength of steel. Wow. Don't quote me on that. It it depends on the the grade of the titanium. I love that. Do you do you know how to make titanium jewelry? Like, do you ever make rings or anything like that? I have made a ring. Mm -hmm. And I, I for, unfortunately, I don't have it on me right now. It's upstairs. Oh, but yeah, okay. I've made a ring. I've made a couple of rings. I don't know where they've disappeared to, but I have one. I know for sure. Wow. It's upstairs. Well, well, let me ask you, you know, I just got a new black titanium ring. How do they make black titanium? Is it naturally black or is it processed to be black? Uh, titanium is actually a powder. Oh, okay. That's processed into a metal. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. Yeah. So it, uh, for it to be a black one that's more than likely been either heat treated like that or I want to say uh, it's got some anodiz and uh, I can't I can't talk today anodizing done to it okay well I'm just curious because I just discovered it I'm like I got I got now uh, they're similar they're both concave that's my silver yeah. natural and that's my black one. cool I love that you, you do all of this and you know, I've been reading about the spiritual properties of titanium. And they're saying in the magical community, it's kind of new to magic because it's not, you know, been used in a lot of modern witchcraft. So, but people are saying they're, they're finding, and I think it's true, that it's called a transitional metal in the sense that it helps people to move forward in their lives. And it also aids in communication with other worlds, you know. And, you know, I'm starting to wonder if I might have some in me because I've had back and neck surgery and I've got a cage. So I'm wondering if I've got titanium floating around inside me. Well, most likely you do because I talked to my mother's surgeon and he said that almost all internal parts on people now are titanium. They're using it like that. So I bet you got it inside you. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't doubt that either. I have uh, four screws in my ankle right now, so. Really? Oh, painful. Yeah. So I don't have to go out and buy it. I've already got it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it built in and ain't going to lose it. No. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> but, you know, one of the amazing physical properties of this metal is that um, it has no reaction with the human body. There, people that are, like, highly allergic to metals, do never even not even them have a reaction with titanium. So that's huh. pretty amazing. That's really interesting. Hey Bob, we got some shout outs though in our chat. Do we oh, have a moment to do that? Oh. We got a lot of people over here. All right. We got Gav. We got Timothy Gallagher, Mama Bird, Joanne B. We got Armani in the house. We got Simba. We got Lotus Night Rain, Miss Duffy. Uh, we got a lot of regulars here tonight, Bob, and also a couple new names as well. Moonblood here. Hi, everybody. We're so glad you're here. We really enjoy it. We are so happy. Thank you for taking the time. A lot of you are over in Europe, and I know you're staying up late for us. And I want to give a shout out and say thank you for that that extra extra energy you put in. It means a lot. You know. Well, Lord Tony, I want to jump back here because I thought um, you also talked about another metal briefly last week, which was, and I just started discovering a tantalum. Can you tell me about that? Is that a pure metal or is that an alloy metal? Uh, tantalum is it's made out of actually tantalite. It's made out of the mineral tantalite. And uh, okay. that's what I have right here is the tantalum okay. metal. And when, once it's refined, it becomes a very hard, dense, heavy metal. And like I was saying last week, these two, basically, this is heavier than this piece of titanium. Mm -hmm. It... Uh, it's really dense. They use it a lot in electronics, especially uh, high energy capacitors. Wow. And, uh, well, you know, I heard the titanium is loved because of its lightness. Is this yeah, it, one of the lightest of the metals? Yeah, I think so. It's 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 one of the lightest, but strongest. I would say definitely not the lightest. Isn't that it's, it's one of the strongest, and that's uh, its compatibility with body is why it's so used so much used in the medical industry but it's lightweight and strength is why it's used so much in uh, aircraft wow 
Now, would tantalum be used in the body, or is that more industrial then? It's actually um, considered toxic. The oh, body. okay. So we don't want to put that in our bodies. No. Good to know. Good to know. But it's 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 really good as far as like building energy, holding energy, um, protection purposes. Um, I was you you brought it up before. Uh, I can make a wand out of this. I thought about doing that too, just by attaching uh, some selenite to one end and. I'd like to have that, you know, divine energy going with it at the same time. But I love it. Well, Lady Angela's into selenite, aren't you, Lady Angela? Yeah, I love selenite. Me and Tony both really favor selenite, but I think that's great. And I've seen yours and Carol's uh, uh, artwork with wands and with um, using different, like, clays and stuff. You could actually craft it around it would be a suggestion. And then, like you said, which is probably what you're thinking to do anyways. But, uh, hey, Mrs. Duffy just gave you $5.83, Bob. Oh, thank you. i got to get my chat going here. I've been so excited. Do we have time for one question? Jump in. Simba has a question. They ask, um, can you tell the difference between psychic and magic work? Also, um, thank you for the spirit shout out. Well, yay. Um, hold on just a second. got to get my... We all know Bob can't multitask all day. I don't multitask. I know. <laughs> I'll start off with Lady yeah. Angela. I will let you talk on that. I see smoke coming out of here. I think there's a lot of psychic work in magic work. Um, everybody has, I'm more of an intuitive. I wouldn't call myself a psychic like Bob, but I have, you know, strong intuition and hunches. And, and I do incorporate my intuition with my magic work. I think a lot of us that do work magic have that strong senses of that kind of stuff of intuition whether it's psychic or not so i kind of incorporate it with it um however there are some psychics that don't do magic work you know they just strictly stick with psychic work um it's kind of a tough question for me to answer but well you know i'm gonna jump in. i think that's really good point you made because it's true there is kind of a separation many of you know i was in the spiritualist church for a long time and the spiritualist church is a church of psychic but interesting that if you were to talk to most spiritualists about magic, they'd be saying, oh, we don't get involved with that. And what's interesting is magic, how do I explain this? Magic is much more visceral. It's much more of the earth. It's tangible. Psychic work is more mental and more air-based. So if you want to think of an elemental connection, the psychic is the air, the mind, Witchcraft is the earth power. And they're not necessarily one better than the other, but they're just a different focus. Uh, but you can do both. Now, in the, uh, to get not to get too technical here, but spiritualism, psychism comes out of the hermetic tradition. The hermetic tradition is based on Hermes Trimestris, who taught more mental concepts rather than physical concepts. So again, it's more of the mind, hermeticism, whereas witchcraft and Wicca are much more, I guess the only way to say is of the body and of the visceral. Does that make sense to you guys? That makes good sense. A lot of times, actually. Um, a lot of times, like Lady Angela was saying, when I create a wand or, or you know, even the staff, um, I kind of do a connection of both. You know, I take the object, I hold the object, and then I let the spirit guide me in how to make that object, you know, better or what to add to it. So it's kind of a combination. I agree. I think you're right because you're taking something physical but infusing with the spiritual power. So it is kind of both. You're absolutely right. That's a good point. Timothy Gallagher makes a comment on here, and I think it's in regards to metals, and I think it's a really good point. Um, he, he says, wouldn't direct current and alterate current seem like easier ways to explain it? I think he's talking about metals. And I think some metals are more receptive and like easier to transfer, where some are more like send a power out themselves. Would you guys agree with that? I want Tony, I'm interested to hear your view on that, because you handle metals every day. Do you get a sense of that? Um. That's kind of an interesting question because I do, I do know some metals are more conductive than others. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to use like gold, which is really conductive, yeah, you'll get a faster energy response through that. 
Uh, whereas with, with tantalum, it's going to be a slower buildup because the energy itself is taking forever to get through it. You know, not really, I wouldn't right. say, but it, it's dense and it'll conduct it a little bit slower, but more energetically. Isn't that amazing? Tony, what other metals do you have that with you? Uh, I have some brass here. It's in the garage, so it's not too shiny. Um, aluminum and. Of course, a chunk of copper pipe. Oh, wonderful. well, you know, I want to talk to you, have you talk a little bit about brass because I've been working on brass. The reason why is I'm going to laugh, but my Louis Vuitton bag has a really fine brass, and I've looked at other bags that have cheaper brass, and I've come to realize there are different grades of brass. And I thought maybe we could talk about some of the different grades of brass. Uh, I, I'm gonna, as far as the brass goes, I'm gonna, you know, it says it's a mixture of copper and zinc. Um, it, it depends on, you know, how much of each one of those is put into it. You know, what grade you're gonna get out of it. You know, if it's, I'm gonna say if it's got too much copper in there, it's gonna be really super soft and not so easy to constantly work with. Whereas too much zinc will give it a completely different hardness property, a different color and brittle. Isn't that interesting? Well, I just bought, I haven't received it, but I just bought a brass pentacle to wear because uh, I wanted a gold sort of pentacle. And mm -hmm. so I bought a jewelry, jeweler's brass pentacle. You know anything about jeweler's brass? Uh, jeweler's brass is probably going to be really soft and uh, easily scratched. And uh, okay, probably so be careful. Yeah. Probably be, probably be easier to polish, though. Okay, good to know. Well, you know, brass is the color that in magic traditionally is like solar energy. Wouldn't you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And now you also have aluminum there. And for our British viewers, uh, aluminum is how the British say it. But we say aluminum. aluminum. Yeah, they don't know how to pronounce anything correct over there. What's that? Leanne just uh, donated $11.14. I think it's in British pounds. Oh my gosh! Thank you so very much. Yeah, no, I, 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 I just said that uh, they don't know how to pronounce metal terms over there. You know. Now, would it cast iron? Cast iron's metal too, isn't it? Yeah, it's iron. Right, <laughs> and very dense, isn't it? Uh, I haven't been hit with it, so I really don't know. I bet it hurts. I bet it hurts if I threw really my cold at you. <laughs> I actually have some cast iron, and it is heavy. Yeah, it's very heavy and dense, and it will hurt. <laughs> I, I have an old skillet that got older than me, and I call it the husband beater. Right? <laughs> right? You know, I have to go call for it. <laughs> wow. Lord Tony, can you share the brass up close to the camera so people can see that? Yeah. Uh, try to give you the shiny side to it, but uh, yeah, it's been sitting face down. So, so yeah, it, it looks like gold. All well, it is heavy, but it's much, much, much cheaper. Isn't that beautiful? Lotus, Lotus Night Rain gives us some good info. She says that she uses a lot of silver, and she heard that it intensifies energy. Also, that fairies are attracted to silver. Um, she remembers Lord Bob's video about fairies and that iron burns them. That's interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting thing because in magic, now I love the fae, but I have read in many places that the fae tend to be you, you iron as poisonous. Like if it touches them, it just bolts or comes even near them. So. You know, this kind of makes me question, and, and maybe somebody in the chat also may want to know. I've been drawn also to stainless steel. It's a, it's a nice metal for jewelry, but the stainless steel, because it comes from iron, is stainless steel toxic to the face? This is something I'm trying to figure out. I have not yet worked with enough of it. But does anybody have any ideas on stainless steel? In the um, I smell smoke, so I'm going to go and investigate real quick. I'll be right back. I gotta make sure it's outside at a neighbor's house. I'll be back. Okay. My my spidey senses are on. All right. 
Martin, what's your thoughts about stainless steel? Um, it's a pain in the butt to work with sometimes. Really? Yeah. It, what is uh, stainless steel all... for people who may not know? Uh, stainless steel, it's it's just basically it's it's a better quality steel. It uh, it doesn't really stain. It does tarnish a little bit, but it's easier to you know to to clean out. Um, they do put it in body sometimes. It it doesn't really rust. I can't remember the makeup of it. I think there's a lot of nickel in it to keep it from tarnishing and rusting. How fast? Don't, yeah, don't quote me on that. But I don't really work with stainless. Well, I can't say that. The job I'm running right now is working with stainless steel. But uh, it, it it's a good metal when it when it's the right quality. That's so. Interesting. Now you also bought some aluminum there too. Now that's a metal I'm very drawn. Mm -hmm. Can you show us your aluminum? You're talking the aluminum? Yeah. 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 Aluminum is fun to work with. You can make just about anything out of it as long as it's not considered to be super tough, tough to work with. I like you know, it. You know, yeah, I like it. I, I got a bunch of these. I was going to make these into uh, cabinet handles because I like the, the octagon shape. Oh, now, you know, in, this, in astrology, aluminum is the metal of the sign of Aquarius, which I am I'm an Aquarius. And each zodiac sign has a metal. I don't remember all of them right now, but it's like, I think Aries is iron. And um, I can't remember now all the signs, but I know that, that Aquarius, our metal is supposed to be aluminum. So that's interesting. Uh, Timothy says nickel's a another fascinating metal. You know, nickel is interesting, but I read somewhere recently that a lot of people have nickel allergies these days. Hmm. Jewelry with nickel in it. Has anybody experienced nickel allergies? Yeah, me. You have it? Yeah, I have what it. You know, what's your experience? Nickel plating. Um, like I've had jewelry that's made out of it like earrings especially and it literally will break me out Ow. and yeah it's not fun so i have to be very careful about what i wear um most of my jewelry has to be pure gold and pure silver other than that it it's just not gonna work for me i, I hear you i'm wearing tonight a sterling silver chain and pentacle here you can see this yeah uh, and I, I'm a big fan of the pure metals as well. But you know, there are a lot of interesting alloys also. Like, for example, pewter is being used as a big jeweler because I have some beautiful pewter pieces as well. Or Tony, have you worked with the, the alloy pewter? Uh, as far as machining, no. It, uh, I'm, I think it's just it's too gummy of a metal and it's meant for casting purposes, really. Interesting. See, it's so fascinating to hear your direct experience because you have a real sense of how the metals work and what they feel like. To me, that's fascinating. Yeah, I think it's just too soft and malleable to uh, put in a machine and expect the machine to make a quality part out of it because uh, the machines I work with would probably tear it to pieces. Right. Okay. I want it into a gummy ball. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you bring some copper also, Lord Tony? Yeah, just a, a piece of copper tubing, a little piece I had sitting in the garage. But. Well, the reason I bring that up is, you know, there's a big thing, or at least there was a few years ago, back in particular in the 1970s, people would make copper pyramids out of that sort of piping material. Um, and did you have a copper pyramid, Tony? That's my copper pyramid right now. It's been taken down, but the whole thing is made out of copper and copper. Oh, wow. Wow. I thought you did. Now tell me, do you find that that's a high vibrational metal for spiritual? Oh yeah, it, it, especially when it's it's when it's all set up in the pyramid shape. You you can't wow. get in that thing without tingling like crazy. It's amazing. I'm so fascinated with that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some people in our chat have worked with the the copper pyramids as well. I'd love to hear about that. I love copper as an energy generator and um, conductor. Um, Gav says he keeps old rusted, rusted iron bits on, on his doorstep for protection against negative spirits. That's a great one. You That's know, uh, coffin nails, which are made out of uh, iron or something, I think. I think it's iron. 
but uh, they're also wonderful at being protective wards. Absolutely. You know, Lady Angela, you have at your house, I know, uh, iron, old antique iron keys that you hang for protection and blessing, don't you? Yeah, actually, uh, they're old brass skeleton keys that I have. Yep, uh, definitely, definitely. And, you know, even the Book of Shadows I make, I use metal on the corners. And it's like a protection thing. Like I use metal on the corners, you know, and it's to protect the corners, but it's also to complete and seal in the book for protection as well. And I incorporate other little metal doodads on them, too. So I like working with metal with the Book of Shadows and also with uh, magical jewelry. And Very outside, nice. like you said, definitely. Very nice. Well, you know, also in Wicca, we use a lot of us have metal chalices, like silver chalices or pewter chalices or gold chalices. Mm -hmm. You know? So when we talk about metals, really, you know, think about the whole range of metals. You know, one of my favorite classes I took in high school and in college was chemistry. And, you know, when I studied chemistry, one of the things I discovered was how many metals are pure elements. And it's like when we talk about copper, you break it all down. It's pure. It's not necessarily, well, in the industrial use, it may be alloyed with something. But you can buy pure, pure copper. And it's all the way down to the molecular level, pure. Because, see, metals all carry a vibration. And this is why I wanted Lord Tony to talk about this. Because... Because he handles so many types of metals during his work week, I think Lord Tony really has a sense of kind of energy. Like he, he's picking up, you know, releasing that energy continually. Would you agree, Lord Tony? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, you get a feel for a lot of the metals, of whether you're going to like working with them really or not, and how they feel to you. And, but, uh, yeah, titanium is definitely one of my favorites, but, you know, brass probably the easiest to work with how interesting now you know lord tony there's something and i'm pretty sure you've heard of this in your field of work and if i'm assumptive forgive me but um i read recently an engineering report that talked about consciousness in metals and it said metals they've actually studied this now that metals exhibit fatigue that you can give a metal like a rest. Like for example, if you have a shelf that's made of like metal, like the, the brackets that hold the shelving up, the metal brackets, over time get tired and get fatigued. And so they recommended in this report that people that have like particularly industrial warehouses, let the shelving rest for a while. And huh. do you know about that? Um, I, I can see how it would work because they it does you know, between with the gravity and stuff being on top of it, the stuff's going to flex and nothing's permanent. It's going to start bending itself down over time. And when you take that stuff off, usually most metals have a slight memory to them anyway. So you take that back off of there again, and it's going to come back to almost perfectly straight again. And then so, give it time to settle and then it'll do it. Over so and over metals over. have a memory. This is very fascinating. So it's almost like memory foam and it reforms back into its original well, self. Well, yeah, kind of like if you take like a, a pen, you know, a pen's flexible, you know, you can bend it and it'll pop itself back up pretty much anyway. Yeah. It's the same with metal. It's just, you know, like the tantalum, I don't think I can even, well, I can somewhat, but it, no, I just <laughs> bent it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it. some metals will come back, some won't. You know, what I think is interesting is when you bend metals, even if it's something as simple as like a metal coat hanger, when you bend them, it generates heat in that area. And I think it's a scientific thing, like the molecules in it as you're actually moving it and stuff, but how they get hot. That's true. Absolutely. You know, I hadn't thought of that, but you're right. I've done that, bent up a metal coat hanger. Usually I bend them up in a state of anxiety and rage because they're <laughs> in my way and as I get the hell out of my way. Well, not you, you know. Bob. <laughs> well, some, even psychics have their days where they're less than glorious. <laughs> my, fun, my fun thing to do with metal coat hangers is, is like, I know most of the people now, we have cable, but the old TVs with the rabbit ears, take a bunch of those coat hangers and bring them all in different directions. And have, <laughs> have the kids stand in the living room going, that's better, move this way. You know, that was my fun thing. That's great. 
You get more of a show out of it. Carol, did you get to the point where you'd also put aluminum foil on the, the coat hangers? Oh, yeah. We we had like one special roll just for that. You know, we didn't even use it in the kitchen. It was just for the TV. I love that. Lady Angela still does that where she lives. <laughs> what? With rabbit ears? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, being by that train, you have to have some interference. I right. Well, I love that train. You know, it passes both directions all day, every day, and it's metal, and it's just, it travels the world, and it just brings energy and takes energy with it, and I just love drawing upon that energy of that train. I really love it. I was going to say, that'd be a great way to, like, to send a spell out, like, when the train's coming, just cast it towards and let it travel. Yes, and I have done that. You know, years ago, I lived near a power plant, you know, and it was out in the desert. As in, it was in Buckeye, Arizona, but it was a big power plant. I've been to other since where they have big, giant, massive, you know, the metal power line things and all that going on in the buzz and hum. And I remember just walking, you know, standing near it, and you'll actually feel that vibration in your body, and it's a wonderful way to charge up and draw on that energy. Have you guys ever done that? Actually, um, years ago, I walked like past one because I was helping a friend who actually lived on the property where they had those big tower things. Yeah. And the energy was so strong. I mean, I have a lot of hair. So you can imagine what happens when you get really, really close and your hair goes from this to hello. <laughs> and you're like, what the heck was that? You know? I looked like I was back in the 70s or something with a big afro. And they were just laughing. And I'm like, what is going on? And he's like, you're just picking up the current. I was like, okay, make it stop. And he was like, I can't. It's automatically that way. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it happens where you can actually pull that current out of the ground if you're that close. Isn't that fascinating? That is fascinating. Hey, Bob, we got a great question in the chat. Um, Olive Green asked, they say, hey, guys, how would one properly make an offering? Is there something specific that you should do? Or is just saying, here you go, enough, and thank you? Well, you know, honestly, it can be that simple. Um, the important thing about offering is that you do it with reverence and true generosity of the heart. You know, in Wicca, we don't have to offer diamonds to our gods, but if we want to, we can. But the gods, in my experience, at least from the various gods I work with, the offering of the heart, if you offer just a little cup of water to your deity with devotion, they will receive that with joy. So, you know, making an offering is as simple as setting the intent. You know, I like to say if you're going to do an offering, plan ahead. Because that way, you know, spend a day, like, if I'm going to do an offering, I'll go to the, like, maybe I'm going to offer fruit. I'll go to the grocery store, and I'll think about all day long, like, what would my goddess, like, I worship being a goddess Isis, what would Isis like? And I might research what historically was offered to her. And some of those fruits may or may not be available. Um, like in ancient room, um, what was the word? It's, um, oh, gosh, I'm blanking out now. Anyways, there was a certain fruit that was offered to Isis, um, and it's harder to get now, but, you know, um, but you don't have to do the ancient stuff. You can also do modern stuff. You know, find something you feel like Isis would like. Maybe Isis would like fresh pineapple, you know, and so you might buy a little pineapple to offer to her. And whenever you make an offering, you know, uh, do it from the heart, and don't, um, don't take it back. Like, don't say, oh, I wish I hadn't given that. I'm going to keep it for myself. Once you give it to the gods, it's theirs, mm -hmm. um, especially with food offerings. Now, in the food offerings, what's traditional is you offer to the gods first. And then if you have a lot, of, like, you know, let's say you offer a whole bag of candy bars, you know, which you could offer. Then afterwards, you can distribute that as blessed food to people, you know. Um you know, but like, for example, I'll go out and buy jewelry to offer to the goddess. And I know Carol's done this as well. Oh, like, yeah. You know, like, I will go out and I'll buy a set of earrings for Isis because I know she'd like them. And I'll offer those on the altar. And later, those go in a special tray that's used to decorate my statue of Isis. Mm -hmm. Carol, you've done some of that offering type work. 
Yeah, actually, I do have a actual statue. Just well, not a statue, a mannequin, just like you do. Yeah. And what I've done is, if I buy myself a piece of jewelry that I really, really like, I will buy two. One is mine, and one is hers. So when I wear mine, I wear it in honor of her. Oh, that's lovely. That's yeah. lovely. Another thing on that is, you know, sometimes I'll buy things for myself, but it's um, like a special perfume or something. And when you wear it, you honor the goddess within or the God within, depending on what it is, you know. And sometimes you could just get something that's special. Maybe it's a little bit more expensive. Using perfume as an example, the perfume's more pricey or just really special, but you really feel drawn to it. And you think, you know, that the goddess and the gods would like it, you know, and you could buy it and you could give yourself some of that. And that's honoring the gods within you as well. Absolutely. And Lord Tony, you know, we were talking about copper, and I don't know if you know this, but in India, copper is sacred to the goddess Durga. And many times people will offer copper pots or they'll offer sheets of copper to like adorn the roof of her temple and stuff. So no, I, I, did not, I did not know that. So I was going to tell you that copper is a, is a wonderful offering. Many ancient cultures, that's also an offering. So Literally, you can offer the gods food, water, clothing, jewelry, anything, incense. Incense is a great offering. They love that. Uh, in fact, in the ancient temples, I was reading this recently, particularly in the temples of uh, Rome and goddess Isis. Well, other gods did too, not just Isis, but the one I'd read about was particularly Isis. People would bring candles or like they would make wax or oil lamps and bring that to the temple. And at the Temple of Isis, they had lamps always burning, 24 hours a day, like the light of the goddess. So you could make a little lamp offering to the goddess also. That's awesome. That's awesome. Moon Fay has a good question, and I think a lot of us have run into this. They ask, um, what do you say to those who think Wicca is demonic, to those people that attack us? What's a wonderful comeback to those people? I try to stay clear of them, first of all, because they're very confused and they're usually angry and they're usually nasty people. And they're scared of what they don't understand. And they're very hard headed most times as well. And you're, you're going to come into a challenge or a battle with them. You're not going to change their mind. And sometimes I'll just stay clear of them because it, I don't I don't need to defend it. You know what I mean? Because they don't understand it. They're coming with the open mind. I might offer them some answers to questions, but if they're attacking, I stay clear of them because it's just, there's those kind of bad, closed-minded people out there. Yeah, unfortunately, many churches, um, and in fact, I've seen this on YouTube and reported some channels of churches because the pastors will get up, literally, and they'll film their Sunday sermon, and they speak against Wicca in the church, and it's blasphemous things they say about us. Yep. I've classified as hate speech. Mm -hmm. it's they, they actually encourage their congregants to go and attack Wiccans and disrupt their circles. Yep. In fact, there are videos on YouTube mm -hmm. of, of Pagan Pride Days where the Christians descended on Pagan Pride Day and tried to break up their circles and their rituals. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to pick on Christians, but honestly, that's who's doing it a lot in the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's just the truth. Now, one of the things that I do, if I do get cornered, sometimes it happens because, you know, people just box you in somewhere and you're stuck. Because a lot of times I get criticized, I'll be wearing a pentagon, pentacle like I'm wearing today here. And they'll say, you're wearing a satanic star, that's evil. And I say, really, it's evil? I said, God doesn't like that, do they? They said, no. I said, well, gee, God must hate all the starfish of the world. <laughs> Because God, I'll, usually I'll say, who made the starfish? Who made the, well, usually I start with, who made the fish of the sea? Oh, God made the fish of the sea. Oh, did God make the big whales? Oh, yes. In fact, Jonah went in the belly of the whale. They'll tell you that story. Did God make sharks too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, well, then I said, well, did God make starfish also? And usually they go, uh huh. And I said, starfish, look at a star. What does a starfish look like? It's a five pointed star. God created the stars and yeah. the starfish and many leaves stars. So I use their own logic against them. Uh, my, my comeback for that is, okay, so you're a Christian, right? And they're like, yes. Okay, 
So what do you put at the top of your Christmas tree? <laughs> oh, oh, brilliant. I mean, if that's not, you know, pagan symbol, why are you putting it on the top of your tree? Why do you go out every year and buy a lit star? Mm -hmm. All you're doing is honoring what we do. Exactly. And Christmas is, Christmas is very pagan. <laughs> it is. And I like to remind the fanatics who attack me, especially sometimes people write to me and say, you do astrology, that's demonic. And I'll say, the first people who saw the Christ child, other than Joseph and Mary, were the astrologers, the wise men. They asked about the stars. They studied the stars and, and did good with it and found amazing mm -hmm. things and helped other people. So, mm -hmm. A couple things from our chat. Kathy Private says, uh, I'm a Christian. I'm not a witch, but I do hoodoo, and I think y'all are awesome, regular people. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sue Thank Valenta you. has a great question. They ask, what makes these practices specifically Wiccan? Is there a difference between Wicca and other forms of traditional witchcraft in the practices you talk about here? Uh, well, the, probably the main thing in Wicca is that we do a lot of traditional witchcraft, but we have vows that we take uh, to the Wiccan read, uh, at least in our order. Uh, we don't believe in doing curses or death magic or any of that. We don't do any of that. Wiccans are very much into peace, doing magic for healing, blessing, and prosperity. We don't need to hurt somebody with our magic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Gab has a wonderful thing. He says, no offense to Christians, but if anyone rants at me about it being demonic or bad, his answer is, hey, my religion was here thousands of years before yours, so deal with it. That's a good point. You know, that is a good point. I love that. Lady Angela, I think on your website you used to have a bumper sticker. Maybe you still do. And it was something like, my goddess gave birth to your god. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, I do. I love that one. Yep. I need to get that one. So. Yeah. By the way, speaking of your website, you know, for you guys who want to get some of these cool Hatton and Wiccan things, you definitely need to pop over to rarewiccaspells.com. And if you're a Spirit Channel supporter, you can get a discount. You want to tell them about that, Lady Angela? Yeah, please do. Um, every time you buy something from rarewiccaspells.com, you, you can use coupon code Spirit Channel to save 10% off of your purchase every time. So hope to see you there. I want to show everybody my hat. I love that. So I found it on Amazon and it's so cool. And it's a casual pointed hat and it's airy. And I can wear it as a sun hat or a fishing hat or around in town. And it's a witch hat, but yet it's not in your face all the way witch hat. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the one, that's the same one I have. I yep. had last time. Yep. Yep. I thought it was similar to the red one you have. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. You inspired me because I'm kind of jealous of your hats. So I had got me too. I'll wear another one next show. <laughs> have to explore that that might As be you can probably see my um familiar decided to join in he doesn't want to be left out today oh isn't that precious you know animals yeah. are very psychic they always gather when witches gather yeah, yeah. He's saying hi with his tail no oh, okay. you got a pretty cat thank you say hi Gab reminds us to not forget about the OPC hoodies and shirts. We are still working on that. Uh, we, we've gotten a lot of suggestions. I forwarded some emails over to you, Bob, some people that are uh, interested in designing stuff or giving us ideas for where to go. And uh, Bob's been pretty busy. Bob's been pretty busy with his mom, and he hasn't even been at home hardly at all, the poor guy. Yeah. So it's in the works. It's not off the list. It's on the list of to-do. Yeah, for those of you who sent me emails, um, go ahead and resend them. I know there was a member of our order who was a graphic artist. Mm -hmm. I believe it was a female, and I'm blanking on her name, but I, the email got buried in about 1,000 emails. Mm -hmm. So if you want to rewrite me, if you're here, I hope you're hearing this. Please Bobby, I might check your Facebook. I think I forwarded that one to you on there as well. Oh, okay. nice girl. All right. Thank you so much. Because mm -hmm. We do want to have a beautiful T-shirt, you know, that we can wear proudly for the order. So it, it is in the work. You know, it's also in the work. It's been real busy. Uh, today I've been doing a lot of writing. I'm working on my upcoming astrology book that's going to be released. I and can't I'm, wait for that book. Get that out. 
hopefully, well, I wanted to have it out for summer market, but it's going to end up being the fall market. But that's okay because it'll be out before Halloween, mm -hmm. you know, for the Christmas season. So, cool. Christmas stuff. That'll be the perfect time. You can always buy an extra and give it as a Christmas gift. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. So, you know, but yeah, I've been trying to get my book work and it's been a lot of stuff. But we are going to get that back to the t shirts and not the work. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that astrology book, Bob. I'm really super stoked about that. Well, I'm excited. I've been enjoying writing it. It's been, um, you know, it's, it's nice when you write a book after you've done a lot of work in the field because it comes much easier you know uh, astrology is such a big subject that i'm not and i have to be straight up here i'm not writing this as the end all be all astrology it's really an intro sort of book to the sun signs but that being said i think it will be fascinating for people. and whether you're new to astrology or a long time practitioner i think it will have stuff that you'll enjoy that's awesome. Absolutely. Oh, Nigella for me is here. Hello, dear. She just has a question. Why do you guys think that so many uh, people are against Wicca? It really makes no sense. A lot of religions and beliefs, a lot of religions and beliefs that are unusual. You know, I think that a lot of why Wicca has such a hard time. It's not really our beliefs. It's the propaganda that has been built against the religion by the traditional church over many centuries. And it's still being taught and practiced in churches today. I can say that's true. And let's not forget the entertainment industry. They boost it. You know, you're right. Because they make witches look evil and scary. Yeah, they we're not. Good shows. What's that, Tony? So we're not. <laughs> well, you know, Tony, I think you've been dipping into that Necronomicon too much. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You got me there. Well, <laughs> what what metal would you offer to Marduk? Oh, most definitely the titanium. Yeah, I think that's his metal, too. I agree. <laughs> So, yeah, anyways, I think it's all a propaganda thing between Hollywood and the, the church over time has made us all into evil. And you know what's interesting? You guys, I'm sure, know this too, but the word pagan actually in the early days only meant somebody who lived outside the village. It had no connotation of good or bad. It was like, oh, they're pagan. I mean, they followed the old ways. And eventually pagan got evolved into they're pagan. They worship the old ones. And it mm -hmm. got stigma, but it was originally not a bad word. Yep, those who worship the old ways, you know, and work in the old ways. And the same with the word heathen. You know, you, people you hear that. You guys remember in the 1970s, the Red Fox show, um, Samson and Son? Yeah. Aunt Esther, who was a devout Baptist, and she carried her Bible, and she walk in, and she said, Fred, you old heathen, you. Yep. <laughs> I just think it's a little bit. Anyways. <laughs> the heathen actually meant people who lived on the heath, which was kind of further out in the country. Anyways, we got a lot of questions here. Uh, um, oops, I can't see him. I'm vision. Gav Hines said he has loyal cats, Lady Carol. And he says his cats, uh, Tom, who was a fat bugger, was always nicking food. If we didn't watch it, <laughs> I know that my mom's dog, little grizzly, I have to watch him too. If I turn around, he'll jump on the dining room table and still. <laughs> well, this guy doesn't even realize he's a cat. He's a bottle baby, so he thinks he's a person. Oh, <laughs> you feed him with a bottle? Uh huh. Well, I did when he was a baby. When I got him, he still had his umbilical cord on. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah. So he doesn't realize he's a cat. He doesn't realize. Aww. He thinks he's a person. And I don't tell him any different. <laughs> you know, Lady Angela, I was just thinking of something I wanted to ask you before I forget. Do you have any spells that you sell that are related to metal magic? Do you have spells for like silver or gold or 
Don't, don't know, but I could definitely work on getting some of those. You know, I work. I, I've worked more with the with the crystals and stones, you know, and, and minerals, but not necessarily with the metals. You know, that's something I think I'm going to explore more, especially after tonight's show. It's just something that, you know, we each have our favorite areas that we work with, and that's an area certainly I want to expand upon. Well, I was just thinking of it. I think that would be a really cool new area, because you know I don't have it here, but some of you may have read it. I, I recently got Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Crystal Gem. Ah, yes. You know that book? Yep, I love that book, actually. I think they can hear that at your site also. So yeah. um, that book, though, really got me thinking about metals because, you know, he talks about metal magic in there. And I just think it's, a, it's an interesting area because, like you, Lady Angel, I've done more work in the past mm -hmm. with crystals mm -hmm. rather than metals but now that i've discovered titanium it's opening up my my mind to like wow i need to incorporate more of the metals in, in my life and you know lord tony he sees it every day so it's natural to him but i think a lot of us <clears throat> excuse me it'll be something that we, we could expand our magical abilities with yep absolutely i'll explore that Kathy Private uh, keeps asking a question that I'm not too sure exactly what she wants to know, but she says, Bob, please tell people about spiritualism churches. Well, spiritualism, let me just clarify. Spiritualism is a separate religion from Wicca. Um, I am, tonight we're focusing on Wicca, but our the spiritualist church uh, is a church of, of people who are basically follow psychics and communication with the spirit world. Now, a lot of people view the old time mediums as witches, but a lot of the mediums themselves would disagree with that title. So there is a division between them. Not an enemy. They're not enemies, but um, I, you know, I left the spiritualist church because it got too political, and I don't want to get into all that, but at the time I was discovering Wicca while I was a spiritualist, and there were various spiritualists who said that you could not practice Wicca and be a spiritualist. I simply disagree with that. I I do both because all day long I work as a spiritualist when I'm doing psychic work. And then, you know, my Wiccan practice is when I do my magic and rituals and private circles. Um, so I practice both, you know. And when I do a seance, that's a spiritualist activity. But then when I do a full moon ritual, that's a Wiccan activity. So they're, they're different, but they do work hand in hand. And the spiritualist church, uh, if you're interested, is... In the United States, the biggest spiritualist church is the National Spiritualist Association of Churches. That's a mouthful, but it's abbreviated NSAC. So you can look up the NSAC website, and that gives the definitions of the beliefs of spiritualism. It's nsac.org, and that will tell you more about spiritualism. I hope that is that goes back to, you know, how we are eclectic witches, you know, we take a little bit from everything. We follow bits of our Christianity, you know, we, we honor Mary, we love Jesus, we, we honor several of the saints. Um, we take a little bit from spiritualism, we take a little bit from witchcraft, we take a little bit of whatever speaks to us and our soul and just feels right. We make our own path. And that's something that's nice with the Order of the Purple Court is we all do our own thing, believe our own thing, but we are of a like mind. We get along wonderfully together. We encourage each other, help each other. You know, it's just a wonderful environment, but we're all eclectic witches. We all do our own thing. We found our own path and we're lifetime learners. We're always forming our craft, you know, our specific craft and what your faith is should be specific to you and what speaks to you because it's your faith. It's your belief. It's what you feel is right and good and is going to get you up into Summerland or heaven or wherever you're going, you know, it's the way you communicate with, with our creator and uh, your beliefs of the creator, that's your belief. So it's got to be personal specific to you. And we encourage you to explore different, you know, beliefs and, and techniques and systems and find what works for you. You don't have to take it all. You could take the bits that make sense to you and make your own way. That's awesome. You know, I love that you say that lady Angela, because you know, right behind you have Lord Ganesh. He's one of your oh, guys. Yeah. And Lord Ganesh is actually a Hindu god. Mm -hmm. but he can be worshipped by Wiccans as well as they mm -hmm. form the horned Lord because his, his tusks are his horns. And you know, I just read an article recently by, there was a, a meeting between the Wiccans and the Hindus. They had an interfaith conference. Mm -hmm. And um, 
the Hindus were very fascinating to learn about the Wiccans, how similar our faiths are. And there was a big question that arose among the Wiccans. They said, are the Hindus upset if we invoke their gods? And the Hindus said, no, our gods are for everyone who wants to call on them. So mm -hmm. it was really nice dialogue. And, and so that eclectic approach is one that in the order of the Purple Core we really follow. Oh, yes. You know, I encourage people to be eclectic and, and explore working with different gods and goddesses. You know, I have some that I, I favor. And it was a long time before I started working with Ganesh and Lakshmi because they kind of go hand in hand. And once I started working with those two, for me personally, things just start really happening for me. You know, and now I actually show a lot of honor and reverence to them, to them, to Mary, to Guadalupe and to Hecate and Isis. Those are some of my, my female patrons that I'm just really connected with. But Ganesha and Lakshmi are very powerful forces in my own life. And I was fortunate to, for them to find me, to call to me and me to find them. So explore different things. Find what works for you because that's how you're going to grow and learn and become the person who you're meant to be in all your spiritual essence and all of your light. You know, we often forget that when we work with different deities, mm -hmm. it's not, oh, you have a statue of Jesus, you have a statue of Mary, you have a statue of Isis, you know, you have Ganesh, you have this. It's not about the statue, it's the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's actually what we're working with. The only reason we have a statue is so that we can say, oh, this is something that we can identify with here on earth. Mm -hmm. if we're in spirit realm, and Bob has said this many times through, you know, his spirit guide. They don't have a color. They don't have a shape. They are pure love, pure spirit. And a lot of people here want to say that, you know, oh, it has to be Jesus or Mary or, you know, whomever. And we forget that we are not connecting to the statue. The statue is just the object. We are connecting to the spirit. Right. Absolutely. That's a really good point, Carol. You know, that's a really good. Point. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I remember when I was, you know, I explored a lot of different Christian type type churches and faiths, and I remember um, I was studying Christianity. I was really young, and I remember in the Bible stories, there's a story about when the people, I believe it was a golden calf idol that they had Moses. made, and uh, you know they 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 were taken over and the calf was destroyed. And it was a long time ago when I read this story, but it had to do with idol worship, you know, and uh, the Christian God being a jealous God and things like that. And, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, cause the Egyptians and many other cultures as well honor the, uh, the cow is a very sacred animal. And it is, you know, it's, it's, it brings us milk. It brings us life. It brings us so much wonderful things. And, and it's a, I'm lost for the words, but it's an honorable animal, you know, but that, that when we have, like Lady Carol said, when we have a statue, it's not the statue that we're worshiping, just like she said, it's just the essence of that, of that deity and the essence of our creator in different forms that our human mind can relate with because God is so much bigger than what we could ever grasp. Well, you know, I agree. And I think when we pay, pay reverence to a statue, like putting an offering at it, Again, I agree with you. We're not offering it to that stone idol. We're offering it to the spirit of who that represents. You know, a great way to kind of challenge people who attack you and call you idolaters. I um, I had a Christian one time who was visiting my house years ago, and they saw my statue of Isis. They're like, oh, you got to get rid of that. That's idolatrous. And I said to them, I said, uh, open your wallet. And they said, why? I said, just open your wallet. Well, they, I knew that they had pictures of their mom and their family in their wallet. Mm -hmm. I, said, uh, I said, I want you to take out the picture of your mother and destroy it right now. And they said, oh, I couldn't do that. I said, why? I said, it's not your mother. Would you kill your mother if you destroy that picture? And they're like, well, no, but, but it, it means something. It reminds me of her. I said, so it has a connection to her in some way. But you know it's not actually her, but she worked Mm -hmm. so close to your mom and then when i explain that to them they finally got it yeah yeah they got to have an open mind you know and be willing to see but that's the trouble with the world today there's a lot of not open-minded people 
We're about out of time, Bob, but I think T. Rose Lever has a great question. They ask, um, Bob, if you're scrying and something that you see scares you, how do you get rid of it? Can you turn the black mirror down? Oh, absolutely. You can end a scrying session. Generally, what happens is when you first get into scrying, you're opening doors at the lower levels of the astral realm, and that accounts for why some of it's kind of freaky. But in time, what you'll find is you get more adept at it. You'll go through the lower levels so quickly you won't see anything, and you'll get to your goal. Uh, but this is why I always tell people, you know, do some rituals of protection. Maybe cast a circle before you scry, uh, burn some incense, raise the vibration and that way, when you start to go through the astral portal, you know, you'll get beyond all of that real quickly. Another thing I want to mention is make sure before you start any scrying, you ground and center yourself. Because a lot of people will not do that. And they'll go in and it's kind of like jumping out of the tub, but you still have your clothes on. That's a good truth. Yeah. You still have to make sure that you're cleansed, you know. So I would tell you straight off the bat, make sure you ground and center yourself before you start any scrying. See, I, that, that brings the question on of how to do that. I'm sure that someone's going to ask. Definitely. A lot of meditation. <laughs> Absolutely. And Lord Tony. I wanted to throw out this because this is, brings in a good point. There are some metals, I imagine, that you could hold that are very grounding, like that tantalum maybe, or do you have metals that you feel like lead? Yeah, I, I have to assume that pretty much most metals would be grounding mm -hmm. just because of where they originated from to begin with. Mm -hmm. Stones too, I bet. Stones too. Yeah. Well, you know, yes, I think so. I have at my home altar, I have um, one of my altars. It's my Sabbath altar. I have four rocks set around it that I got from a riverbed. And they're big, heavy rocks, and they represent the four quarters. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and I lay my hands on them. They really ground me down. So you might want to get a giant rock, try to find one outdoors somewhere, and put it in your altar area and put your hands on it. That'll help ground you down, too. Something I do is as simple as sitting on the floor, you know, like cross leg style, putting my hands on the floor and just channeling that energy, you know, into the ground, you know, connecting with it. Picturing you're a tree, you know, and your head goes up into the heavens, but yet your roots and your base go down into the earth and ground that energy and let the earth heal you naturally. Absolutely. It can be as simple as that. <laughs> well, you know, I live in a high rise and yeah. I want to ground myself. I'm way up like 15 stories high. Just won't do, huh? <laughs> no, no, actually, the secret, this is something for people, because I know there's probably some people who live in buildings like that. What you do is you visualize the girders of the building. Try to, in your mind, visualize the steel, because you can follow the steel girders of your building in your mind's eye as you meditate. And <coughs> and it's usually iron, which is grounding, and just followed all the way into the ground. That's so even though you may be up there, you can still tap into that earth energy. That's really good advice. Or you could actually put your hand on the wall. Well, that's will... actually, thank you. I do do that sometimes, too. Yeah. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. lean against the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bob, look at the time. My goodness. Oh, my look gosh. Me. It was Lord Tony. He's got the medal tonight. Was it wasn't me. I'm spending the time with that tight tantalum. That's what it is. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> sucking the time out of everything right now. Well, I want to give a big shout out to Lord Tony and say thank you for, for yeah. to bring all of those beautiful metal samples for us. Because I think that is very helpful to see it and hear from somebody who has such direct experience. So I thank you, Lord Tony. Oh, anytime. Well, that's great. Well, you know, now that I know you've got such access to metals, I'll be calling you every week asking. I'm going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show up and steal the... Still the, the uh, titanium. Well, I got a ton I can give you if you want. But you gotta oh. come and get it. <laughs> <laughs> My precious. <gasps> titanium. Before we go, I mentioned last time um, that I had made a uh, kind of like a book. And what this is, it's just it's basically a notebook. But the way I've decorated it, I want to show you guys. Oh, let me see. oh nice. 
Ooh, cover looks familiar, later, Angela. Yeah, it does. You found that fabric. Awesome. Oh, yeah, I did. Now, the way I did this, I also put a latch. Oh, that's nice. And basically, it's a notebook. Oh, very nice. Did Beautiful. you find it on fabric.com? Um, no, actually, I found it at walmart.com. Yeah. <laughs> I love Walmart yeah. fabric. Yeah. <laughs> But what I've done is I've created dividers here on the side so you can actually like divide your subjects if you're working with, uh, you know, basic elements or, you know, whatever you want to do. And I've taken like some old folders, file folders and created oh. this with little divider so you can kind of reference into it. That's cool. And I think there's about maybe 200 pages in this thing. That's and really nice, Carol. Yeah, it's all bound and sewn and everything. It was actually fun to make. And uh, I'm going to have fun using this because I can take this with me and write down quick notes or spells that up in my head or, you know, many different things. That's awesome. Did you actually sew it to the spine when you made it? Yes, I oh, actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's really yeah. tough. Yeah, it is. But I took uh, printing in high school, so this is like old news to me. That's what cool. I, did, I took a bunch of uh, composition books, broke them apart, and that's how I got the paper. It's cheap, easy, and simple. And then you just re sew everything back together because oh, they already have the holes in them. Oh, got that's the clever as all. Well. Yeah, oh, and I love that. It makes a nice little book and also you can close it so you don't have to worry about, you know, anything getting lost or, you know, anything coming out of it. And I just used a simple old buckle and just made a little strap. And when it's closed, that's what it looked like. Oh, it's awesome. Beautiful. Yay. Well, Lady Carol will be putting the prayers of the order in that and an offer. Yeah. Yeah, that's another reason why I made it as well. So that if anybody has any type of prayer for themselves, a family member, a pet, I can write that information in the book and put it on the altar. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but you may be able to see a small glimpse of it. Uh, oh. Oh, beautiful. Oops. That's the altar. Nice. And what I do is, if someone has a prayer request, I put that in the prayer request, and I keep two candles. One is a battery-operated candle, which stays on continuously, and then, of course, I have a regular candle. So that, that prayer continues even when I go to bed. Ah, uh, that's perfect. So, you know... Like I say, if anybody has a prayer request for themselves, a family member, a pet, um, you know, just drop me a note or drop one of us a note and they'll pass it on to me. Ah, now I got to try to keep my camera up. There we go. <laughs> That's um, awesome. You know, that, that's basically what I'm doing now is for the OPC. Um, I keep the sacred staff close to the altar and every day. I do my little ritual, praying for everyone and, um, you know, praying for healings. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, thank you, Carol, for your service because it is helping so many people. And, and I'm thankful. And, you know, in fact, one of the things I, I have to say is all of us, all the officers of the OPC are doing daily rituals now. Uh, I've been doing my daily offering, my libation um, to the great mother and father to mm -hmm. for all the orders. So I've been literally going out yeah. on the moonlight every night and doing yeah. So, and yeah. show us what you're doing. Lee. And I burn, I always keep a candle burning for the LPC. And I have another one over there on my Mary altar that I, I light whenever someone specifically asks me for healing energy. I light both this one and I also have a healing one over there as well. So I always light the sacred flame to bring blessings to those that are in need in the purple court and everywhere. So I got your back too. 
Lord Tony, you've been offering your sacred sword. You've been doing veneration and prayers with that, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Every night, actually, I go outside. And uh, I, I basically, I, I pray for everybody. That's Everyone's uh, safety and the OPC, everyone that's safe around me and family members and all for their well-being and uh, health and protection. And he's got angels behind him, so. Yes. Sure, we all got angels behind us, but yeah. <laughs> well, he uses his a lot more than we do. Yeah. I agree. I agree. You guys, we want you to know that we are lifting all of you up every day, and we're so honored to have the chance to be here. And we are actually going over time here, so we're probably going to have to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. But I want to say thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. Listen, um, you know, keep it here at Spirit Channel. Tomorrow is Monday. We're going to have horoscopes. Mm -hmm. Don't miss that. And, uh, you know, also I just want to say, you know, I am, for those of you who are new here, may not know, I am a full-time professional psychic medium, going back to our discussion about spiritualism. So if you're interested in getting on my schedule for a private session, please call my office, 571-483-2112. We'll get you on. Or you can send me an email, readings at robert-hickman.com. I'll have those links below. Lady Angela, you want to talk about your site again? Yeah, everybody, please go check me out at rarewickaspells.com. I have lots of witchy items. I have little things, big things, everything you could dream of. Um, and don't forget to use coupon code SPIRIT CHANNEL, all one word, to save 10% on every visit. And Lord Tony, you want to talk about your work and site? <laughs> sure. Um, you can reach me at, uh, well, I'm not even going to say that thing anymore. Just uh, my link is down on the bottom in the description here. <laughs> but uh, you just want to Google Lightbringer's Angel. It's all one word. And no problem finding it out. I do a lot of angelic healing and I've been being kept pretty busy this last week. So I like being busy. So keep it up, people. All right. Contact Carol over on Facebook. She'll, she'll get you in your prayer request book and um, send y'all some good vibes too. Yeah. There we go. Well, guys, listen, we thank you for being here. And listen, we'll see you back here next week for. <gasps> Witching hour. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Thanks for joining us. Blessed be everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a blessed, day. blessed evening. Good night. <laughs>